Hey everyone, Dave here with my review of Forage, designed by Laura Southwell and published by Frog Tree Games. Now this game is available on the Game Crafter, so um, after the review, if this is something that you find that you'd be interested in, uh, you can go ahead and click the link, it will take you over there and you can get yourself uh, a copy. Also, I just finished a playthrough if you want to see how the game is played. That link will be in the video description as well. You can check that out too. So, uh, real quickly, Forage is a uh, two-player game in which players are going to be competing to collect sets of different types of cards, whether they are berries or they are mushrooms or they're beetles or even using these snails. Uh, in order to collect and have uh, majority, the most cards of one type, uh, and also trying to collect pairs of cards in order to score additional points. And so, uh, what's going to go? What's going to happen is it's going to be a back and forth. Uh, players are going to alternate turns, being able to buy and sell cards in order to accomplish this. And so, and you'll see that if you watch the playthrough. But very, very simple rule set. Uh, the rule book is only. Uh, like a handful of pages long and uh, there's plenty of illustrations that are in here that tell you how to play tells you how you're going to score points and um, specific rules on the snail cards and then how you're buying and selling the cards and how the the game ends so uh, very very simple rule book I'll have you up and running in no time the uh, component quality is really really good the game crafter has really made uh, significant improvement on their materials that they use for their cards these the card stock is absolutely uh, fantastic and then we just have basic components of these black discs for stones and then we have the a d4 that comes with the game and this is used for determining the start player and then how many cards are going to be available out of the forage deck so now we talk about, um, in addition to the production quality, the one thing that really drew me to this game initially was uh, the artwork for this game. And Laura has done such a fantastic job with these. I just wanted to, to uh, show you up close some of these cards, some of my favorites. These oyster mushrooms look fantastic. Um, I really like the snail eating beetle. The lady beetle is probably one of my favorites. Uh, she's done a really, really great job with these and the berries too. Just a nice, uh, like a watercolor. It has like the real, just they're real soft. And I love the backgrounds that are in here. But even better is the fact that she chose a great font for uh, for all of the text that's on here. And then also having the scientific name on here. It's kind of a neat little science lesson uh, while you're playing the game. And this really, um, if you follow Frog Tree Games on social media, or if you've seen Laura's website and you look at her pictures and stuff, this type of stuff is in her wheelhouse. And so you can tell that this just kind of carried over and sharing her passion by producing this particular game. Now, let's talk about the gameplay itself because um, it is a light game that uh, two players can play casually so couples can play it or you're sitting there with one of your friends or just um, you want to bring this out and play it with your lab partner in a biology class or zoology or whatever um, this is something that you can do and the again with the rule set being really really simple um, you're going to be able to get up and running right away however there are some interesting decisions that this game is going to present you with uh, you start off the game with uh, with five stones and as cards are being revealed from the deck onto this what they call the for the forage pile um, when you are purchasing cards out here you um, they cost one stone per card however you have to buy all of them of that type. So right now, if this was the only cards that were revealed, it was going to cost me two stones to take these two cards out there. So I could choose to uh, purchase them if I wanted to, or I could choose to uh, pass. And as players are acquiring cards, not only do they have the ability to buy cards, but they can also sell cards. They can sell two cards off and get five stones. So it's a way for you to bring in more money and uh, what happens is as cards are sold, they are going to go up into a sell pile that's up at the top of the board. And players can purchase from up here. Um, they don't have to buy any of a specific type, but they are going to cost you uh, two stones per card. 
Now here's something interesting, and if you see there's some of these snails that are over here, and they're overlapped with a uh, particular other card because um, when snails are in the, uh, in the forage pile, you can buy them with additional cards. So for example, if I bought, if this was the, um, the pile out here, and I chose to spend three stones, this snail goes along with it and will, all, will count as a berry because I would put it like this. And so it becomes that type, and this type cannot change. So later on, if I sell this um, snail, it's going to be, we have to, you have to remember that this snail is a berry. And so usually as I was selling cards, I put that up there, and so we know that that is a berry. Now here's an interesting thing. If you already had a snail that was a berry, you could try to um, get another snail and uh, bring it, you know, and you can get, it's, you don't have, when you have pairs of snails um, in your tableau, in this, in, in our playthrough, we didn't have any snails in play, um, you will actually score five points for having pairs of snails. It just happens to be that um, as they got sold, they got real expensive to um, get them. Now, that um, comes into some of the strategies of this game. You're purchasing cards, you can choose to sell cards off to get money to uh, buy more things or to make things more expensive for your opponents. So it's kind of, so it comes across as a light game at, at first, and it is still on the lighter side. However, there are strategies that come out and there are different things that, that kind of press the players to have to um, think a little bit before they make their turn instead of just flying off the, the handle and just going willy-nilly. So uh, there are certain things where as cards are coming out, do you want to buy them to prevent your opponent from getting them? Uh, do you want to buy them and then later on sell them to make them more expensive for your opponent to get? Or do you want to acquire the cards because you just straight up want to try to get the majority or you have opportunities to score and get bonus points? So here, like if this game were to continue and those were the two cards that were out there and I was able to sell, um, I would actually sell off this raspberry and one of these oddball um, mushrooms in order to get five stones and buy these two things, this elderberry and blackberry, because they would be useful for me um, in order to have uh, identical pairs. I would have a pair of blackberries, that would be three points, the elderberry would be three points, and, then, and also um, I would have six, point, uh, six cards total in this row, and so that would probably give me the advantage in uh, the berry type card. So being able to look and see what's out there, what are the decisions that are going to be made? Now, that's this guy looking at this. This player over here is going, hmm, um, I see those cards. I don't want him to have those. I may just be willing to spend what I have left to take them away, you know, and delay a turn and then maybe later on go ahead and sell something else that may not be useful. So there's some different decisions that are that way. Um, I found it to be uh, really important to try to go after um, unique pairs. That's what this player ended up doing over the course of the game. They made up a bunch of points by acquiring uh, pairs of cards. This one also went after pairs of cards but also had a majority. So there's some interesting decisions to be made in this game. It's very, very casual, uh, quite a bit of fun. I think if there's going to be a, um, a negative to this game or a complaint is that if you constantly roll high numbers on this uh, particular die, you go through this forage deck really, really quick and the game is over too soon. So uh, I would, would hopefully she'll do an expansion for this or maybe revise the game and add some more cards in there. Um, but I don't know how much that's going to offset the balance of the game. But uh, that's probably my minor quibble is that if you constantly are rolling high numbers on the D4, um, what happens is this market becomes so saturated with certain types of cards that you can't acquire them because it's going to cost you too much. And so um, you just have to be aware of that. But overall, uh, Forage is a really, really neat little two-player game that uh, I recommend. And uh, so I hope you check it out. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.